Praise God, praise God. We want to give a shout out to special friends in um, Flower Mount, Texas, Sandra and Mike Inman. Hallelujah, Sandra and Mike. So good to see you. A uh, shout out uh, goes up to Chester, Pennsylvania to my daughter and son-in-law, Lorraine and Rob Martin. A uh, shout out to Melanie Bias down in Gray, uh, Georgia. We're going to get down there pre pretty soon, Melanie, and a shout out to all of our friends, Florence Gaffney, um, a shout out to David Carter in Dubai, the country of Dubai. We want to give a shout out to Elijah and all of our friends in Kenya and all of our friends in Cameroon, Abel Ka in Cameroon, and all of our friends in Jamaica and all over the United States. Praise God. We want to welcome you to the Back to Basics online church. I'm so glad that God uh, started us in this online church over seven years ago, and we consider ourselves pioneers in the online church. And God has blessed me to be able to train many other pastors who are now doing online churches. I believe the Lord had me out there on the vanguard, on the cutting edge, and we did not foresee at that time the coronavirus, but I'm so glad God gave us the experience and the training. So now we're training others how to get the word of God out there, even though we're under restrictions and buildings are closed and we're under social distancing. But God has a way to get you to get the word of God out and to get fellowship with one another. Many of you cannot attend your regular church services. And so we want to stand in the gap along with other online churches. We want to stand in the gap for you so that you have a place to go, a place where you can call home, a place where you can fellowship, a place where you can feel wanted and loved. And so we extend our love to you. Praise God. And uh, on behalf of Jackie and myself and the Back to Basics uh, Ministries Board of Directors, <clears throat> we want to give a shout out to you guys. And on behalf of our Back to Basics Ministries, uh, several churches in Africa, we want to give a shout out to you and we welcome you <clears throat> as you worship with us today. Today we're going to start a, something special. Um, we're going to start on the first Sunday of each month. We will designate that <clears throat> as the Lord's Supper for Holy Communion. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Um, we haven't been doing that on a regular basis, but starting this week, the first Sunday of each month, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper. I'll be doing teachings on the Holy Communion <clears throat> and the Lord's Supper, and we believe this will bless you. Praise God, praise God, and I thank God for this opportunity. And so our, our format looks like this. We will greet you, and um, uh, at quarter of 11, we start playing some songs, and hopefully starting next week by 12, by, by 11, we are ready to go. We will play songs for about 15 minutes, then we we'll greet one another, then we we'll go into our prayer and into our scripture, and then I uh, hear the word of God. And then uh, after the word of God, we'll break bread together. So you might want to get uh, your cracker or your piece of bread ready right now if you haven't done so. And um, uh, take time. Go get your piece of bread, a little pin pinch of bread or a cracker, and some grape juice. If you don't have any grape juice, use a reasonable facsimile thereof. Use some cranberry juice or something like that. Okay, and so that at the end of the service, when we take the bread and the wine together, we're celebrating the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, celebrating his body and his blood. We're going to look at this scripturally. And, and you know, the Bible teaches us um, that there's healing. There's healing in the communion service. There's healing in the Lord's Supper. And so we're believing healing. Hey, Melanie Bias. I thank God God has brought you through COVID-19, hallelujah, and we're claiming total healing for you and for your family, praise God. And some of you have been suffering sickness. Some of you may be currently undergoing attacks on your body. Well, we're believing God for his word. Satan is a liar. 
God is a healer. And so as you uh, break bread with us today and drink the wine, we're anticipating and we're believing together, hallelujah, that God is going to heal. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No plague shall come nigh our dwelling. And so we, we trust the word of God and we bless God and we thank you. We're just going to ask God. We're going to ask Sandra Inman, <clears throat> having a talk with Sandra in a long time, Sandra or Mike, just to unmute your phone and come on, say hello to us. We want to welcome Sandra and Mike Inman from Flower Mount, Texas. Can you do that, Sandra? Yes. Hi, Pastor. Hey, Sandra. <laughs> How are you? We are doing fine, praise God. We're doing fine. How are you guys doing out in Texas? We are doing good. It's still hot out here, but we're doing great. Praise so. God, praise God. We think about you guys quite often, and it is so good to hear your voice again. Praise God. It is so good to hear your voice again. So give my love to Mike, and, and we appreciate you guys very much. And um, uh, Sandra is a... Uh, one of our students in the Back to Basics School of Ministry, and God is using her mightily. So we'll be talking again soon, Sandra, okay? Okay. Praise God. God. You. Praise God. Hey, I see Jackie Carter's on with us now, and I'm so blessed to have Jackie Carter, uh, um, the first lady of the house, and, 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 and my precious wife. And we're going to ask Jackie if she will lead us in prayer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of today. We ask, Father, that you will help us to be good stewards and to use it to your honor, your glory, and to the benefit of others. We thank you now for this time together. We thank you for the praise songs and the worship songs that you've allowed to be played so that we can get ourselves in, into the, the atmosphere of holiness and worship. Mm -hmm. We pray now that you will bless your servant, that you will speak to us through him, that you will remove him individually and use him to give us a word. We pray, Father, that you will bless your people everywhere. Bless those who are on now individually. Bless them as a family. And bless your people collectively. For those who will hear the word later, Father, we ask that they too receive your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Jackie. I praise God for you. And uh, praise God for everyone who's with us today. And praise God for those of you who are listening by way of the recording. <coughs> this coffee is supposed to be clearing my throat. This Folgers, this Folgers dark coffee is uh, supposed to be clearing my throat. So we're waiting for that to happen. Praise God. And so let's move on. On Wednesday, we begin our new Bible study and our new course, the uh, Old Testament Books of Poetry. So if you're not enrolled yet, enroll in the Back to Basic School of Ministry. Earn three credits as we study for the next 12 weeks the books of Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. These books will knock your socks off. You're going to get your socks knocked off when we start with Job on Wednesday. So get in touch with us about the Back to Basics School of Ministries, either the um, online course or you can join and take um, independent study courses for your degree. We've got a lot of people enrolled in this school, um, the school which is f totally uh, fully accredited and it is worldwide. Okay, let's go. Turn with me in your Bible, will you please, to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, as we explore the Lord's Supper, a.k.a. Holy Communion. We're exploring the subject today, the Lord's Supper, a.k.a. Holy Communion. Luke chapter 22, starting with verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye, entered, when ye are entered into the city, 
There shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master said unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a very important time in the life and ministry of Jesus. It's his last night with his disciples. And he says, with desire, I desire to celebrate this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Verse 19, we're in Luke 22. <clears throat> and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now, in many of our churches, especially in the Baptist church, at the communion table, you find the words imprinted on the communion communion table, this do in remembrance of me. Luke is the only gospel writer of the four synoptic gospels. Luke is the only writer who includes the words, <clears throat> this do in remembrance of me. Matthew does not include these words. Mark does not include these words. Neither does John. Later on, we see in 1 Corinthians that Paul recites many of the words of Luke in, in Paul's preaching and teaching. So this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. But behold the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the son of man goeth as it was determined but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. So let's take a look at this scripture. And then we'll go to another scripture and another, and then we'll conclude this message by celebrating the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. It is so important that Christians fellowship together. And, and one common ground that we have is to break the bread together and to drink the wine together. And so as, as we fellowship together, I'm believing God to draw the body of Christ, all of us, even closer to him and even closer to one another. Thank God. We looked at the scripture and we see Jesus as the Passover uh, was approaching. And the Passover was the time in which the Jews celebrated the day in which God delivered the Jews from Egypt. And the Passover, the death angel, passed over all of the houses that had blood on the doorposts. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, listeners, wherever you are, Kenya, Ethiopia, Brazil, Russia, Sweden, uh, Jamaica, Cameroon, United States of America, Canada, wherever you are, be sure, be very sure that you have the blood of Jesus on the doorpost of your life. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming for his church. He's coming for not those whose names are on the church rolls or the official church attendance list. He's coming back for the church, those who have been washed in the blood, those who have the blood of the Lamb 
on the doorposts of their hearts. Those who have been covered with the blood of Jesus. Those who have confessed their sins and confessed their faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God who died on the cross, was buried, and rose again from the dead. And the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so we, we see from, from this teaching and from the scriptures a lot of people who are in the church. Yes, a lot of people whose names are on the church roll. Even a lot of people who, my mama, well, she was the mother of the church, or my granddaddy bought the land, purchased the land to build a church, or my great-great-aunt went around with a wheelbarrow picking up bricks and stones so that she could build a church. But ladies and gentlemen, these things do not save you. Building buildings does not save you. Purchasing land does not save you. You must be born again. I repeat, you must be born again. And so wherever you are, in the United States or in, this na in the nations, wherever you are, take time out right now. And, and, and be honest with yourself. The Bible says, let a man examine himself. Examine yourself. If you have not been born again, be born again. Stop right now and, and, and ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. And if you, you are listening and want to be born again, or you, you have been a member of the church all your life, but you're not sure if you're saved, then just, let's, let's go. Let's, let's get saved right now. Let's repeat this uh, and say it to God and mean it with all your heart. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that he was buried. I believe that he rose again from the dead. I want him to be my Savior and my Lord. I receive Jesus by faith in Jesus' name. Now, you, you if you missed any of that, just uh, rehearse this recording, play it again, and just follow it step by step. And if you confess those words or reasonable facsimile thereof, you are saved according to the scriptures. You are saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Now you are a part of the church. For those of you who are in doubt, you are part of the church, the real church, the church that Jesus purchased. He purchased the church. He purchased us from sin. He redeemed us from the curse of sin and the second death. How? Because he paid for us. He paid for us with his own blood and his body. And so as we drink the juice today or the wine today, we do remember the Lord Jesus Christ purchasing us on the cross by dying for us and shedding his own blood and his body, which is a symbolic, uh, the bread is the symbol of his body. He redeemed us from the curse. We are no longer confined to the second death. It is appointed to every one of us. We must die one time, but after death, comes the judgment, and it's at the judgment where a lot of people are going to be very disappointed if they have not confessed Jesus as Lord and lived according to his words. And so we want you to know that you know that you know, and get your household to know, get your spouse to know, get everybody uh, to know who Jesus is so that none be lost. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg you, especially those of you here in America, I beg you, do not believe all this crap that's coming out of the politicians' mouths. Get saved. Make Jesus your choice. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg you, do not be deceived by the Republican Party or the Democratic Party or partisan politics. Get to know Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, the Republicans cannot save you. The Democrats cannot save you. And waving the flag, even sitting up in church with a Bible, 
uh, taking a photo shoot with the Bible in your hand. That ain't going to save you. You must be born again. Don't let anybody deceive you. Please don't be deceived. The Bible says Satan shall deceive the very elect. So know that you know that you know that you're saved and stay saved. You'll see uh, where Jesus said to, to Peter, Peter, Satan wants to sift you. He wants to separate you from me. And ladies and gentlemen, Satan is sifting a lot of people. Many Christians are under attack. Many Christians are under attack like never, ever before. There's a thing called apostasy. There's a great falling away from the church. Many people are using this COVID-19 as an excuse to fall away from the church. Ladies and gentlemen, if you fall away from the church, meaning the body of Christ, not the people on the, the church rolls, but if you fall away from the body, if you break away from the body, there's no hope. For you, If you turn your back against Jesus, there is no salvation. So these are days, not only in America but in every nation, these are the days where we need to be drawing closer to the Lord. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let your guard down. Know that you know that you know that you're saved and stay saved. <laughs> and so starting today and every first Sunday, we're going to just remind ourselves by taking the bread and the wine and fellowshipping according to the scriptures, we're going to remind ourselves of who we are. And, 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 and many of you are going to get healed in your body, in your mind, your soul, your spirit, your marriages will be healed, your families are going to be healed. We're going to see healings throughout the nation as we fellowship and as we encourage other Christians to join us in fellowship with Jesus. We're all fellows in the same ship with Jesus. We don't uh, want to climb out the, of the ship and go on to a, a, another boat or, or a cruise ship. Stay with Jesus. Don't let anything separate you from the love of God. So Jesus took bread and he broke it. So this is my body. This is a symbol of my body. Let's turn to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, because a lot of people had problems with Jesus when he said, this is my body. Unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you, uh, you, you have no fellowship with me. Turn to John chapter 6, ladies and gentlemen. We'll spend a few more minutes in the scriptures, and then we will uh, commune together. John chapter 6. And he says, now let's go to 53. Then Jesus said unto him, unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, I'm in John 6, 53. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now, a lot of folks are going to think, Hey, man, this guy is teaching cannibalism, man. Eat people's flesh, drink their blood. And that's the way some people interpreted it. And, 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 and people are still going crazy like that. But look at the scripture. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. There's only one Son of Man. That's Jesus. Unless you eat his flesh and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Let me read on. Verse 54, whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, you must eat the flesh of Jesus and drink his blood for eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Now, Jesus, this has spiritual significance, what he's saying. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. 
he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. And Jesus is talking about the living bread. Uh, um, during the wilderness wanderings, the 40 years in which the Jews wandered through the wilderness, God sent manna every day except the Sabbath day. Every day they picked manna off the ground and baked it and made food out of it. And that was the meal. God gave them their daily bread and they eventually died. Almost everyone who left Egypt out of that first generation died in the wilderness. Why? Because they dishonored God. They disobeyed God. Even after God performed miracle after miracle after miracle during the 40 years of the wilderness, they grumbled, they complained, uh, 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 they listened to the fake news, and, and they dishonored God, and they died in the wilderness. Of that first generation, only Joshua and Caleb were among the men who left Egypt and were entered into the promised land. Sin can destroy you, ladies and gentlemen. So, and so uh, we've got to get all this crap out of our lives, all these false teachings, all this stuff that Mama said and Grandmama said and Uncle Joe said and Little Willie John said and, and Bishop so-and-so said, all these things that mean nothing, get them out of your life and feast on the Word of God. Jesus said uh, in Matthew, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We've got to study the Word of God and show ourselves approved unto him, and we live by the Word of God. We do not live by the edicts or the mandates of the government or the teachings of this world system. We're Christians. We're different. We live by the word of God. And so uh, in this special Lord's Supper service today and Holy Communion, we're just reminding ourselves of who we are and, 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 and pledging ourselves to obey the Lord Jesus. He said in, in John 6.54, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. There are still people today who differ with this. But listen, look at verse 61. When Jesus knew in himself that the disciples murmured at all, that his disciples murmured at all, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? He said, am I offending you by what I'm saying? You must eat my body, drink my blood. What if you see me ascend up into heaven as I was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the, the, one of the joys, one of the blessings of studying the Word of God. The Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Whether you agree with it or not, the words in this Bible from Genesis to Revelation, all 66 books, this is the Word of God and the Word of God is spirit. And the Word of God is life. That is why the Bible tells us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Verse 64 of John 6, but there are some of you that believe not. Jesus knew there were people following him who didn't believe, and churches are full of folks who don't believe. Some join for social reasons. Some join to satisfy their friends. Some join for political connections. There are people who have all kinds of reasons for joining the church. There are people when, when, when the pressure gets on them and, 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 and those demons are kicking in their lives, uh, they say, well, I'm going to church. And, and they go to church and, and they think church is like alcohol seltzer. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Hey, it might relieve you for 10 minutes. But 15 minutes after you're out of church, you're ready to smoke that Canebus again. You're ready to pop that 40. You're ready to take that cap off that old crow. You're ready to uh, have sex with your neighbor. You're ready to go back into adultery. 
You're ready to go back into lying and deceiving. And, 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 and you're ready to start uh, spreading false news again, fake news. You see, you see, there's no cure-all by going to church. You must be born again. The Word of God is spirit. You've got to get the spirit in you. The Bible says be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, then you've got to start feeding the Holy Spirit what he wants to eat. He's going to feast on the Word of God. The Holy Spirit is not going to get any uh, nurture, any, any, any strength from reading Mar Marvel comics or Agatha Christie mysteries or Perry Mason, watching Perry Mason reruns or reruns of the Lone Ranger or watching old westerns. Or, 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 uh, that does not satisfy the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit thrives on the Word of God. And if you're denying yourself the Word of God and you're not studying you're committing a sin, and, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, Satan's going to separate a lot of people who are disobedient. So draw nigh unto God. Well, how can I draw nigh unto God, Pastor Carter? By rededicating yourself to Jesus today, by recommitting committing yourself, by knowing that you know that you know that you're saved, and make a commitment. You're going to study the Word of God. We invite you to join the Back to Basic School of Ministry. Uh, get a degree. You don't really have to get a degree. Get the charisma. Get the food that we're providing through teaching the Word of God. Uh, study to show yourself approved unto God. Okay, look at John six sixty six, chapter six, verse sixty six. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walk no more with him. One of the saddest verses in Scripture, ladies and gentlemen, I just read it, John 6, 66. Many people who follow Jesus for years turn back at this point. Let me read that Scripture again. You might want to underline it. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter made a bold declaration, just like he had done previously at Caesarea Philippi. You are the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. Jesus said, look at all those people leaving me. They're leaving me. They said, that's a hard saying. We can't eat his body and drink his flesh. That's cannibalism. We can't do that. This man's crazy. And they left following after Jesus because they didn't understand what he was saying. But today, you understand. You must be born again, and you must be fed spiritual things. The Word of God is spirit. The Bible is spirit. Whenever you read the Bible, you're reading spirit. Spirit, the Spirit brings life. And so Jesus said, will you leave me also? He looked at the twelve. Simon Peter said, Lord, where can we go? Where can we go? Only you have the words of life. Only you have the words of eternal life. And now let us turn quickly to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we will wind up this message for this morning. And I'm quite sure some of you who are listening today, you're going to make a decision. You're going to reaffirm and reconfirm who you are and whose you are. It's mighty good to be on the Lord's side. It's mighty good to be on the Lord's side. With Jesus, you cannot lose. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived. Many people in this nation are being deceived. They are following political rhetoric. They're believing lies. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived. Commit your way unto the Lord. Commit your life unto the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. This church was so corrupt. 
They claimed to be Christians, and they were doing everything they could possibly do, living ungodly, but yet they called themselves Christians. It's a lot like America. People lie, they deceive, they're, they're uh, 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 living in homosexuality, lesbians, they're adulterous. This is an adulterous generation. It's a cheating, lying generation, but yet people are in church right now. There are a lot of people, a lot of preachers are preaching, and they're corrupt. A lot of online ministries, many of them are corrupt. I'm not saying we're, 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 we're the best of all, but we know in whom we believe, and we know what God has us doing. And, and I want to warn you. I want to caution you. Be careful who you assemble with and who you listen to, and, and let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Don't be so quick to take something someone says and put it on the uh, uh, um, Facebook or email it or tweet it because a lot of stuff we're getting, uh, I see a lot of Christians passing stuff on to other Christians. I saw a gal yesterday, one of our students, I've got to reprimand her. I got a contact her this week. She put out there, she listed some names of some evangelists and preachers and called them false prophets. Why? Because she heard somebody else say it. And that is not the way we roll, ladies and gentlemen. You don't denounce somebody. Uh, don't point the finger at someone and call them a false prophet. Uh, uh, the Bible cautions us, touch not my anointed, says the Lord, or do my prophet no harm. So be careful what news you spread. Be careful. Uh, 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 be careful what you say. Be careful. Uh, uh, I see a lot of people uh, condemning Black Lives Matter because you know what happened with Black Lives Matter? Black folks were out there demonstrating against these police brutality, brutal killings, and then a lot of white folks came, yes, yes, the anarchists, and they began uh, killing and burning and looting, and now uh, the Black Lives Matter has a black na a bad name to it, a bad taste in people's mouths, but it wasn't the Black Lives Matter protesters who did the violence. It was, and you see it, you see it on the film. You, when you look at the films, you look at the tapes, you see that those ain't black folks burning down buildings, even here in in Atlanta, that was not a black woman that burnt down that uh, 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 that restaurant. They, but they caught the white lady on tape. And so be careful. <laughs> be careful who you follow. Be careful what you say. Stand for justice. Stand for righteousness. We do not stand for violence. We do not stand for looting. We do not stand for uh, murdering. I hate racism. I'm going to look you in the eye. I hate racism in every form. Racist, I don't hate you. I hate racism. Racism is not of the Lord. And, and uh, uh, I, I, I thought I had a good friend in, certain, in a certain pastor until I asked him, I said, Pastor so-and-so, how come you white preachers never preach about racism? I thought he was my good friend and companion, co-worker in Christ. I said, how come you white preachers don't preach against racism? I said, why is it always blacks preaching against racism? And he looked at me and said, we ain't going to. And next thing I knew, boom, duh, there goes our friendship. Ladies and gentlemen, how can you call yourself a Christian and be a racist? How can, how can I call myself a Christian if I hate white folks? How, come, how can I call myself a Christian if, if, if I hate Hispanics? How can I call my, myself a Christian if I want to build a wall and keep certain people out? Because they're, 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 they're like animals. That is not Christ's way. And so we've got a long way to go. Yes, I know this message is going to challenge a lot of you because it challenges me. Paul had to challenge the Corinthian church had a man in the ch church in Corinth. He's a leader in the church, ladies and gentlemen, and he was sleeping <clears throat> with his son's wife. No, no, I'm sorry. He was sleeping with his father's wife. We had a, a man in the church in Corinth. He was having sex with his stepmother. And everybody knew about it. 
But nobody was doing anything about it. And ladies and gentlemen, Paul took offense about it and told the Corinthian church members, you've got to judge this man. You've got to do something about this. If you don't, how can you call yourself a Christian church when you tolerate this? And ladies and gentlemen, we find that we're tolerating a lot of stuff that is anti-Christ in this life, in this nation today. And so get back into the Bible Read the Bible. Live the Bible. Let the Bible be a living epistle written on your heart and take a stand. Hey, so what if you lose friends? So what if you lose your wife or your husband? So what if you lose your children? So what if your grandchildren hate you? Stand upon the word of God. So what if they kick you out of your office? So what if uh, 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 the, the politicians denounce you? So what if they, if they put you in jail? Go to jail. Serve your time. But don't quit on Jesus. Look at 1 Corinthians 11. Paul had to reprimand, reprimand this church about adultery and uh, about greed and about lying and deception and, and, and false teaching and many uh, teachings were, were false, and so Paul corrected them. Verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Paul says to the Corinthian church, let a man examine himself, so, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinking, drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Ladies and gentlemen, in that church in Corinth, they were eating greedily, stuffing themselves. Those who could bring wine brought wine to the, to the table. They got drunk. The wealthier got drunker. They were gluttons, and they denounced the poor, and there were people at the table who didn't have much to eat, and the wealthy and well-to-do would not share with them. These were the so-called Christians in Corinth. And they were gluttons, they were, they were greedy, and they hated one another. Then there were dissensions among them. Some hated one another. Coming to the Lord's table with hatred and, and racism and bigotry in their hearts. And, and these same things are happening today. So Paul says, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Verse 30, listen to this. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, because people do not discern the body of Christ. They pretend they're Christians. They go through the motions. They even go through the rituals, the communion. They go through the rituals. They know how to act church. They know how to do church. They know how to uh, play church. But their hearts are not pure before God for that reason. Many so-called Christians, this is, not, this is not a passage written to worldly folks. These are supposed to be for Christian, Christians. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. What's that mean, many sleep? Many die. They are succumbing to the plagues, to the sicknesses. Well, what sicknesses? The sicknesses that come as a result of playing with God, of, of being deceived 
and allowing yourself to be deceived and not doing anything about it. The, the sickness, the plague of, of being a homosexual and sleeping with another man and having sex with another man when you know it's an abomination, but you keep on doing it. The, 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 the sickness uh, that comes with being a woman and being married to another woman and doing that which is ungodly with another woman, you know it's wrong. The Bible says it's wrong. You might ignore the first chapter of Romans, but it's wrong, and you know it, but you keep on doing it, and then you hate those who tell you you're wrong. But it's going to catch up to you in the end. It's going to destroy your body and destroy your soul. Oh, but I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> yeah, and you are an abomination because you're letting another man uh, 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 do to you what's ungodly. Or you're letting another woman do to you what's ungodly. You can proclaim all you want till hell freezes over that you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. You are not filled with the Holy Ghost if you're sleeping with another man. You are not filled with the Holy Ghost if you're sleeping with another woman. You are not filled with the Holy Ghost if you continue to lie and cheat and deceive and tweet lies. You are not saved. You're not born again if you get on Twitter every day and tell the American people lie after lie after lie. You are not saved even though the, evangel the evangelicals say you're saved. You know in your heart you're not saved. Get right, church. Bible says in verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, and we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, carry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. We'll continue with these teachings on the first Sunday of October as we uh, spend the first Sunday of each month uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper and the Holy Communion. Study the Scripture. Apply the Scripture to your life. Rightly discern the body of Christ. Jesus said, if, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. You do not have eternal life. Find out what that means. Go over this tape. Play it again and again and get the meaning and commit yourself to the Lord. Study the word of God. You can't dispute this word that I, I preached to you today. You can't dispute it. You can't argue with it. Uh, 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 submit to the word of God. Let the word of God chasten you as it chastens me so that we're humble before the Lord. Humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God. And we praise you, Father God, as we prepare to eat the bread, which represents your body, and to drink the juice, the fruit of the vine, which represents your precious blood. We do prepare our hearts. We ask you now to get your um, piece of bread or your cracker. I have a piece of cracker here. I have my cup of grape juice. I do not use wine. Wine is alcohol, and I swore to the Lord I would not drink any alcohol deliberately for the rest of my life. When God delivered me from drinking in 1970, 50 years ago, I swore to him I would not drink any more wine or alcohol. And I thank God I've been true to that. If I have tasted any, it's been not deliberately. And so, the body, the bread represents the body of Jesus. Take it in your hand. Jesus took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. We want you right now. Or if you're watching this video and you don't have your bread and wine handy right now, review the recording. And before you review the recording, get your bread and wine and then follow at, that, at the appropriate time. Let's eat of the bread. Thank you, Lord, for your body, for dying on the cross for us. 
endless drink, the blood of Jesus, which is symbolized by the fruit of the vine. Let's drink together. And as we eat and drink together, I pray, Father, that if there be any sick among us, you will heal them. And I pronounce that you be healed now in the name of Jesus. Father, forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you said you've come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And we thank you. We bless you. We honor you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. It's one minute before 12. We're going to end our recording. Contact me if you have any questions, any comments, need further instructions, get in touch with me, Leroy Carter. You can find me on Facebook or my email. Respond. I'll respond to you.